Hello students, today we are going to discuss about exam pre-incomes under section 10. Out of that, today we have to discuss about uh, retrenchment compensation. Uh, here there are two words retrenchment and compensation. As you all know, uh, there is an employment, at the time of employment there is an agreement between the employer and employee. Uh, that may relate to the emolument, that may relate to the tenure of the service, that may be related to any other provisions which is related to employment. But sometimes for some reason, employer may retrench the employee during his service. In the sense before retirement or before the date of his retirement, at any time the employer may retrench the employee. In that situation, the employer need to pay some compensation. Sometimes employer may be government employee, non-government employee, central government, state government, public sector units, whatever it may be. But that compensation is considered as a income in the hands of the employee at the time of retrenchment. But not entire amount is taxable. Some amount is exempted, some amount is taxable. Today we are going to discuss about the tax provisions of retrenchment compensation. Uh, let us have a look on what do you mean by retrenchment. Cancellation of contract or termination of service by the employer is called as retrenchment. In the sense, at the time of employment there is an agreement. There is cancellation of that agreement that is called as a retrenchment, that is it. Either a termination of service or there is a cancellation of a particular contract, that is called as a retrenchment. Then what do you mean by retrenchment compensation? It is very simple. A retrenchment compensation is nothing but a compensation paid by the employer to his employee at the time of retrenchment. So for this purpose, there is a provision of a particular act. Then what is the act? As per the Industrial Dispute Act 1947, the employer need to pay a certain amount of compensation to the employee as per the provision. So, today we have to go, we have to discuss about what will be the exempted compensation, what will be the taxable compensation. Before going to that one, then what the provision says? What do you mean by uh, Industrial Dispute Act 1947 provision? How much the employer has to pay? That we have to discuss one by one. Uh, first one, the taxability. There is a section under section 10, subsection 10b. There is an exemption from the least of the following. There are three items are there. Out of these three items, any amount which is less, that amount is exempted. For example, if he is receiving compensation of rupees 5 lakh, we have to go for calculation of these three content. If these three content having the least amount, say for example, 4 lakh 50,000, 4 lakh 50,000 is the exempted out of 5 lakh, 4 lakh 50,000 exempted, remaining 50,000 taxable. Let us discuss about the exemption in section 10, subsection 10b. The least of the following exemption, what is the first one? First one is actual amount received. At the time of retrenchment, the employer giving the compensation to the employee, that is the first one, actual amount of retrenchment compensation or second one. Maximum limit rupees 5 lakh that is called as statutory limit. Whatever the amount the employer may given to the employee as per the industry dispute act of provisions, but the statutory limit for income tax purpose rupees 5 lakh. The first one is actual amount, second one is uh, statutory limit that is rupees 5 lakh, and the third one an amount calculated in accordance with the provisions of section 25F subsection B of Industrial Dispute Act 1947. Third one is most important because first one is actual we are having in that problem. Second one is, is a statutory limit as we are having as per the Finance Act of the respective assessment year and third one the amount which is, uh, is prescribed by the Industrial Dispute Act of 1947. Then what is the Industrial Dispute Act 1947 section 25F subsection B says? It is very simple, the amount eligible to give the compensation. Then what is that? The compensation should be equal to 15 days average pay for every completed years of service or any part thereof in excess of 6 months. This is most important because this provision, it says what do you mean by salary? So, we have to take into consider 15 days average salary for every completed years of service or part thereof in excess of 6 months. For example, if he is working 23 years and 8 months, we have to take into consider 24 months because it is excess of 6 months. If he is working for 22 years and 
5 months we have to take into consider 22 years only because once it exceeds 6 months we have to round up to the next higher uh, year otherwise we have to take earlier. So we have to take 15 days average monthly salary that is the compensation as per the Industrial Dispute Act 1947. So out of these three first one is actual amount second one is statutory limit rupees 5 lakh and the third one the compensation as per the Industrial Dispute Act 1947. So what is the amount compensation? It is equal to 15 days average monthly salary for every completed years of service or part thereof in excess of 6 months. This is taxability of a particular retrenchment compensation. I told you 15 days average, 15 days average salary. Then what do you mean by average salary, average pay? We are having three categories. One is the person who is working on monthly basis the person who is working on the weekly basis, the person who is working on daily basis. Because as per the Industrial Dispute Act, everyone is having the right to receive the compensation if he is retrenched. The worker may be the permanent, may not be the permanent, may be a monthly OIS employee, may be a weekly, employee, weekly salary employee or daily wages employee. While calculating 15 days salary, we have to go according to his category. The first one is for salary people, salary people in the sense monthly receiving salary, so average of last 3 months salary. Say for example, uh, if he is retiring in the month of August, so we have to take into consider July, August and June, June, July, August, 3 months average salary we have to take that should be divided by 26 and should be multiplied by 15 because one month we are going to take average salary in the case of 26 you will get one month one day salary that should be multiplied by 15. So this is in the case of the monthly salary. So I repeat in the case of the monthly salary employee average pay is equal to 3 months average last 3 months average salary in the when he is retiring from the service or sorry retrenchment from the service. So remaining to all there that will be discussed in the next class. So as of now we are discussed about what do you mean by retrenchment? What do you mean by retreatment compensation? What is the exemption as per the section 10, subsection 10b? So, in the next class, we have to discuss about the remaining part. Thank you.